Hi, welcome to Bonita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. What I'm going to be making today is a tasty recipe called Partridgeberry Maple French Toast. Now this recipe today is a delicious and a very special recipe to us because it's given to us by uh, Doris and Tom Shepard and it's out of the new release cookbook by my friend Jennifer Lee Ill and it's called Newfoundland Best Breakfasts and Brunch. So this recipe is one of many that's in this book. Of course today we're going to make that delicious uh, Parcherberry Maple French Toast. So if that interests you, stick around and let's get started. So this is a pretty um, exciting cookbook for Jennifer Lee Ill and she's a travel writer and she's got many many uh, books but she wanted to write this book here about the B&B's here in Newfoundland and uh, apparently there's over 31 B&B's that's listed in here. This one here for the Parcherberry Maple French Toast and is by Doris and uh, Tom Shepard who owns the B&B. We'll talk a little bit about them and where they're uh, location after. This is the one we selected this time so we're probably going to do a few more from that cookbook. So now the recipe calls for um, um, 10 eggs and a cup of parcher berries and we got uh, cream cheese. Well like you said today we're going to make just a half of this because that will be way too much for me and Raymond but I will share the full recipe with you and again you can do half you can double that again and make more. Now this makes a great brunch and you could make it to the night before and bake it in the morning. This is our Newfoundland and Arbador parcher berries this is frozen, of course, uh, and I got here about a cup. So if you were planning on making the full recipe, you will need a loaf of bread, a large loaf of bread, cut into half inch cubes, or cubes of your choice, of course, uh, whatever size you would like. And what I'm going to do now is start putting this together, and I'll tell you how much as we go. So right here I got a 9 by 9 pan, but again this recipe calls for a 9 by 13, but it's no worries. And you can make it the night before, and pretty much what you're doing is layering this um, ingredients. You're going to put your bread cu cubes on the bottom, just one layer. Now you, if you were planning to have a brunch, maybe for a special occasion, could even be for Christmas morning if you wanted to, and you decided that you wanted to make a 9 by 13 inch um, a pan of this delicious pineapple uh, maple French toast, and not your ordinary French toast. It's one that's done in a pan or a casserole dish, and it makes it more convenient. So what I'm doing here now is poking in through the bread cubes of cream cheese. Now the recipe says Philadelphia cream cheese, but I'm sure if you wanted to make it, uh, if you can't find Philadelphia cream cheese, you buy the cream cheese that's available, no name, or whatever name you can find, and of course affordable. We don't recommend for you to go out and spend a fortune. So poke it down through like that, half of the cream cheese into the bread cubes. Now what we're using is the parcher berries. Parcher berries is uh, a one of our sour berries here in Newfoundland and Arbador, then we freeze so we can have it all year round. Um, if you don't have access to partridge berries, you could use cranberries. And the recipe said if you find a tart, the cranberries, you could always add a little bit more sugar, the brown sugar. So we're just going to do half of this cup into one layer of our. French toast um, casserole here because we're making it all into this square pan and it's ever so delicious. And like you said earlier, this is just a half of the... This is half. Uh, yeah. Jennifer's, uh, well Doris's recipe 
says a nine by 13 because she's got a B&B &B yeah. and she serves quite a crowd. But I'm only making half of it, but I'm still putting in a full cup of the blue, uh, the okay. patch berries because of course, you know me, Raymond, sucker yeah. for punishment yeah, with can, uh, those blueberries. <laughs> uh, blue we, we can definitely handle it. Well, per, I'm saying patch blueberries, patch berries, berries, but yep. uh, uh, Doris had said to me, you could use blueberries too. Oh. Yeah, because she was quite uh, excited about it actually yeah. when I spoke to her about Perfect. doing a recipe. Yeah. That's all you need to do there. When I got this book from Jennifer, I'm so excited because, I'm, for a couple of reasons, of course, I was excited. One, Jennifer uh, has also included our recipes, seven of our recipes, in her new cookbook um, that is featured in there, along with two other bloggers from here in Newfoundland and 31 B&Bs. So the 31 B&Bs being the come home year for Newfoundland and Labrador, it is just absolutely wonderful because it couldn't have come at a, a better time because all of the information for those B&Bs is in this cookbook. So that's exciting. But this recipe excites me and Raymond because we're all about uh, a beautiful breakfast or brunch waking up to put it in the oven. I can't wait for you to make this. So the recipe always said it also said if you don't want it in cubes and you want to sliver these um, I guess shavings of cream cheese so you can poke it all the ways in and you know everything is going to be in there and anyone that gets a taste of this is going to have a sample with the cheap cream cheese in there and like I said top it then with the rest of your berries you can put more in it you could if you don't like um, just a small amount of berries in here. Like you said, this is not a traditional um, French toast recipe. This is one Doris and Tom serves at their B&B here in Newfoundland. Delicious. So now I'm going to crack my eggs into a bowl. Again, I'm making half of this recipe, so I'm only using five eggs. You could use the full ten if you're planning on making um, the recipe for a 9 by 13. Doris said the more eggs the fluffier this uh, French toast is. What a nice lady Raymond. What a nice lady to chat with. So when you put the eggs into a bowl whisk in their um, cup of milk. Now this again I know I might have said it a few times is for um, I'm cutting it in half but uh, the original recipe is for two cups and as well a quarter of a cup of maple syrup and I know maple syrup out there may be a little a uh, little bit expensive so you can get the maple syrup that's uh, or the runnier one that is a cheaper brand if you want to but and if you want to just get yourself maple syrup you could do that and it's about a quarter of a cup pour in and whisk it all together. And like you were saying earlier when you were talking to uh, Doris mm -hmm. and her husband and I could see us going down that way for a visit mm -hmm. and enjoying in the beautiful B&B. &B. Yeah, she's... And she, having a sing song with them because... She, they, uh, uh, she enjoys um, uh, entertaining her, yeah, her guests and got a beautiful B&B &B on Trout River. Yeah. Uh, and gross more. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful spot. So Doris, um, forgive us for only making half of this recipe and as well, Jennifer, if you're watching, it's just me and Raymond, if we got to sit here eating <laughs> this full, <laughs> I know you could keep it and Doris said freeze as well, Raymond. Yeah. But you know me and you, we will have this until it's gone. I got one egg there that's not whisked. The whisk him. We'll be eating uh, this for our breakfast, dinner, mm -hmm. and supper, and we would not want to to share it. Like we'd be yeah. just we'd be just gluttons, eh? Well, then we won't have to cook supper. We'll have leftovers. <laughs> we'll have leftovers. So pour all of that egg mixture with the maple syrup and the milk all over the bread cubes. So also, what you would have to do is take your casserole. Um, I don't say casserole dish, but your your pan, your square pan or your nine by thirteen pan. 
you could cover it with saran wrap, put it in the fridge, put it in there for overnight and then take it out in the morning and pop it into the oven before your family gets out of bed and they'll smell all of this delicious uh, French toast, of course, parchberry, maple French toast, baking in the oven. But if you can't wait and you want to make it right away, that's fine too. Let it rest just for a little to get all of that egg and everything soaked in through the bread. And the next morning is what they said in the cookbook and from Doris, sprinkle about three tablespoonfuls of brown sugar over the top just before you're going to bake it. And then I'm gonna tell you how long you need to bake it for. Before I give you the time of how long you need to bake it, I wanted to do a, a shout out to Doris and Tom Shepherd. Their bed and breakfast uh, again is in Trout River and um, all, all the information is in this new cookbook but I will provide that as well in under this recipe when we share it with you on our channel. So this recipe you put it in a preheated 350 degree Fahrenheit oven and bake it anywhere from 40 to 50 minutes nice golden brown and you can see that the eggs is after just so delightful in there i'll show you what it looks like when it's baked now our delicious parchaberry maple french toast is ready to serve now just look at this oh my gosh i can't wait raymond to cut out a big chunk I can see what Doris was saying. When I was talking to her, she said, the smell of this uh, parchaberry maple, French toast cooking in that oven. And oh, yeah. her guest is just, is just waking to the smell and the, you can smell the maple syrup just yeah. all over the place there. That's a good way to have to get out of bed, isn't it? It is, and yeah. just look, you can see the, the cream cheese just melted through. And of course, those little parchaberries is my favorite, is my dad's favorite. Oh my gosh, I can remember he just having this boiling. Of course, I got some parchaberry jam to uh, serve with it. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that as well. Now, just look at this. Absolutely delicious. Yum. Okay, so now this is where the fun part comes in. Of course, every part is fun for me. I'm gonna pour myself up a cup of tea. And then, what it is, you put some Cool Whip over the top. Now, if you don't have Cool Whip, I'm sure Doris and Jennifer don't mind if you use whatever whipped cream you got available. And some the maple syrup just over the top like this bring your little closer show you what it looks like you can also top it with a few extra um, those delicious parchaberries and if you want to whoops you can even put a little bit of that parchaberry jam on the side because we always got some parchaberry jam here but this is it this is as good as it gets and i can't wait to have a taste <laughs> neither can i taste of this delicious parchaberry maple French toast and of course baked in the oven in a 9 by 13 pan or a square pan whatever you've got available. Mm -hmm. Raymond this is so delicious I can't wait for you to taste it I can't wait for all of you to make it and now I'm gonna wash it down with a little taste of my tea I've got my plate ready whenever you want to put it on there. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Okie dokie. Yes, I can't wait, Raymond, for you to have some of that. It's absolutely delicious. And again, when I spoke to De uh, Doris, um, she had said that her guests like like topping uh, some jelly, different kinds of her fancy jellies that she's got at her b and B. I'm going to leave her information there for you to uh, check out. And I'll also leave access to uh, Jennifer's cookbook if you wish to purchase one of them. And of course, she would thank you in advance plus the recipe we're going to post in under this video all you got to do is it to see more or the arrow down and you will get it 
I will also make the recipe available on our Facebook page as well on our website www.bonitaskitchen.com. If you can't find it there, send me a message at bonitakitchen at gmail.com. So I hope you enjoyed this recipe today again for Parchberry Maple French Toast. And we're not going to take any more of your time. We know it's precious and we thank each and every one of you for spending it here with us today. On behalf of myself, Raymond, and our team here at Bonita's Kitchen, and from our kitchen to yours, you have a wonderful day. And don't forget to join us again on Bonita's Kitchen. Join us by the sea, a journey in culinary, always an open door, Bonita's Kitchen to yours, Bonita's Kitchen.